Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Savvy Forensics. So in the previous video, we have looked about the tissue, how they act as source of biological evidences. And uh, we talked about the first part of tissue that is about the skin. Now in this video, we'll be looking at the second, uh, the fourth part of sources of biological evidences and the second portion of tissues that is the hair. Now what is hair? Hair is usually a protein filament, basically keratin protein filament that grows from hair follicles found in the dermis. So here it is a keratinized or keratin protein filament. Now it is found all over our body but in the forensic perspective only the scalp and the pubic hairs are of utmost importance because they are frequently found at the crime scenes and their identification can be of great forensic importance. So let's see how. So hair contains DNA and as a DNA source, they may be used for forensic analysis. So let's see in this diagram, these are hair evidences and uh, what examinations can be do from these hair uh, evidence is the we can examine the hair structure or the morphology through microscopic examination. We can do mitochondrial DNA profiling. We can do nuclear DNA profiling and further proteomic analysis. We'll be discussing these all in detail when we will be studying the examination of hair. For the time being, we'll be studying about the biology of hair and how they can act as a source of biological evidence. So in the earlier times, the hair examination was only limited to their morphological analysis. But with the advent of technology, uh, hair, it acts as a source of DNA evidence. It was found that hair acts as a source of DNA evidence and we can do forensic analysis through it. We all know that hair is a trace evidence and it contains minute quantities of DNA. So we can... With the development of polymerase chain reaction, uh, which is an amplification technique, it was made possible to analyze very small quantities of DNA in the hair. We'll be studying this PCR in very detail in the time when we'll be studying about DNA. So let's discuss the second part that is the biology of the hair. So hair usually have hair is usually contains two parts. See here in the diagram, the first part is the hair stem which is also called hair shaft, while the second part is the hair root. The hair shaft is the upper portion of the hair that can be uh, seen above the skin surface, while the hair root is the part that is embedded in the dermis portion of the skin. Now, if we take, uh, you can see that hair shaft is usually a keratinized cylindrical structure. If we take a sectional view of the hair shaft, we can see there are three layers. The first layer is the cuticle. The second is the cortex, while the third and the middle layer is the medulla. So the cuticle is the outermost layer and it consists of overlapping cells, which are usually dead and keratinized. The second layer is the cortex. It contains many cortical fuci and many cell organelles, while the core or the central layer is the medulla. Now the hairs are produced in the hair follicles, while hair follicles are embedded deep in the dermis portion of the skin. We have studied this in the previous video when we were studying about the dermis that is the layer of the skin which is the middle layer of the skin and root is embedded or root hairs are produced root is embedded in the dermis portion of the skin. Now the hair papilla it is located at the base of the hair root and it is usually contains nerves and capillaries as you can see here. Nerves and capillaries are present in the hair papilla which contains uh, or which supplies continuous nutrients continuously supplies nutrients to the hair which helps in the growth of the hair. We'll be discussing the phases of hair growth in the next slide. So let's see it. So phases of hair growth. This is a very important topic as it is frequently asked in net exam about the phases of hair growth or the hair growth cycle. So let's see here in detail. So human scalp hair, it grows at its highest rate of approximately one millimeter per day. This is about the scalp hair. Hair growth cycle is basically, it is a cycle of the growth of the hair when the hair shifts from various phases and uh, from the active growth phase, it sheds from the body. So the first phase of the hair growth cycle is the anagen phase. It is also called the active growth phase and uh, here the nourishment of the hair follicle via blood supply enables the hair to grow. From the anagen phase, the hair is shifted to the catagen phase, which is the transition phase. Here what happens is the hair follicle, it detaches from the nourishing blood supply, basically becomes dead. So no, no nutrients will be passing from here 
capillaries to the uh, this hair follicle so the hair will not grow further it is also called the stage of death while the third phase is the telogen phase which is also called the resting phase where the uh, growth cycle ends here without the nourishment the hair dies and falls out which is usually called the hair fall so these three phases are very important from your exam purpose hope you have understood all these three phases of the hair growth cycle so let's move further and see how a hair acts as a source of dna evidence now in the isolation of dna from intact hair roots it is routinely done routinely it is used in nuclear dna analysis so suppose we found uh, this hair sample at the scene of crime there can be two cases if this hair sample contains root with it or it is just a shaft now if it contains root with it then nuclear dna can be analyzed through it because it will contain cells and uh, through which we can extract dna here there is a point to note that the quantities of dna in telogen hair roots they are considerably less than the dna that is found in the roots at the anagen hairs this is usually because at the anagen phase the hair actively grows and uh, the cells are living in it living cells but in the telogen hair the cells are usually dead and very small quantities of dna can be extracted through it now most human hairs recovered from the crime scenes they are shed naturally so it it is usually in the telogen phase and it contains very little nuclear dna so in this case we can do the pcr another way is to move to the mitochondria which is a cell organelle as we have studied in the earlier videos when we were looking about the cell how it acts as a source of biological evidence there we have looked at mitochondria it contains mitochondrial dna which is circular in dna nature so it is also called cdna so the hair follicle cells it contains multiple copies of mitochondria it is a very important source of dna and as a result mitochondrial dna can be successfully isolated from hair roots now this is the case of telogen hairs when we get uh, naturally shed hairs with which are in telogen hair phase now if we do not get root in the hair this case so what we can do is we can use this hair shaft for dna analysis let's see how so additionally mitochondrial dna is embedded in the keratin matrix of the hair shaft cells so hair shaft cells basically the cortex portion which is the middle layer of the hair it contains keratin matrix and it protects the mitochondrial dna molecules from degradation so our mitochondrial dna is usually protected in this layer and we can extract dna through it and do the identification so this is very important here it is a very important point written the mitochondrial dna is maternally inherited which is useful for identifying maternal relatives but cannot be used to perform paternity testing let's understand this here through this diagram so this is the egg cell which is also called ovum and this is the sperm cell which is also called spermatozoa so the egg cell contains nucleus which contains the nuclear dna while its cytoplasm contains multiple copies of mitochondria hence it also contains mitochondrial dna now let's shift to the spermatozoa it contains head portion which contains nuclear dna as it has a nucleus its neck portion contains mitochondria and as we all know during fertilization or during fusion only this head portion it fuses with the ovum and the uh, neck and the tail portion it is usually shed off so the mitochondria is also lost so here in the zygote this is a zygote we can only find maternal dna maternal mitochondrial dna but both the sperm and the egg they contribute to the nuclear dna while only the egg contributes mitochondria and mitochondrial dna to the zygote so this is a very important point and it can be asked in your exam so please keep this in your mind hope you have understood about hair as a source of dna evidence now if you have any kind of doubt you can ask in the comment section below further you can join our facebook and instagram page you can also join our telegram channel for regular updates and you can also visit our website saviforensic.com you can find very much valuable content for your preparation there and you can also if you have any kind of suggestion or query or any kind of doubt you can also uh, whatsapp us in this number talking about the next video we'll be looking at the third portion of the tissue which is the bone we'll understand its biology as well as how it acts as a source of dna so hope you have liked this video 
you can share it with your friends and you can also subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for regular updates. Please stay tuned and thank you very much for joining us.